Listen, listen guys, let me just let you know that the madness, the drama that's about to unfold for this Big Brother Ninja lockdown reunion, I don't think you all are ready. I don't think you all are prepared. Because last night, whilst I was watching the premiere, there were so many things that I observed. So many things. And for some weird reason, out of excitement, I was just so excited. I skipped telling you people all of it because there are quite many. There are a lot. There are a lot. And I did not want to make last night's video quite lengthy. So I said, nah, Glory, you need to treat all those observations on a separate video. And that's what I'm going to do on this particular episode of Frankly Speaking with Glory. So you definitely need to watch to the end of this video to catch all the juicy details because trust me, you don't want to miss out on anyone before i continue this video i just want to let you know that tomorrow is saturday and you know what happens on saturday on my channel we always have our youtube live stream every saturday 3 p.m west african time or you can call it 1500 wat so whatever or wherever is your location please use google world clock so that you do not miss out on the time because i'm going to be doing something special tomorrow over time whilst giving my reviews my analysis on the big brother ninja show um, a lot of people have been you know saying oh glory you're biased this and that this and that so tomorrow is that time where you can come out in fact you should come out and represent your fan base okay because we don't know how tonight's drama on the big brother ninja reunion is gonna go so tomorrow i need every representative if you're a diehard fan of your favorite like it doesn't matter whoever you're a fan to you need to come on to that live stream tomorrow and defend your favorite because a lot of things are going to be spewed tonight on the reunion show so i do not want to come out on my live stream and just be the only one talking i want every single one of you who's ready to defend your your favorite housemate to come onto that live stream and do exactly that so don't miss out on 3 p.m west african time tomorrow on my channel now in my last video i completely forgot to mention news introduction and oh my god <laughs> I didn't even know that you had fans. His fans, they've been coming to bash me. Glory, why didn't you mention you? Why didn't you talk about you? Guys, I am deeply, deeply sorry. I was just as excited as a lot of you were excited. And hey, I forgot. But listen, guys, I'm just going to use this few minutes to talk about New's introduction. It's no news. A lot of you have been following these housemates growth and progress on social media and most of you even know more than I do. I was quite impressed when Ibuka mentioned that Neil is into fashion and design and he's also into acting and recently I noticed that Neil has started building um, a career in event hosting. There was a particular event that happened over the weekend last week, very very massive event and Neil and Dorothy were the hosts for the show and he did quite well because I was checking his um, snapchat um, videos and I was just so impressed with the energy that he brought onto that stage so that was that about news growth after the Big Brother Ninja show. One of the most interesting observations I made from last night's lockdown reunion premiere was Katrina's reaction to Nengi when Nengi walked into the room wait I don't want to believe I'm the only one that saw it who else saw Katrina's reaction Please, if you did, let me know how you felt in the comment section. Because guys, when I saw the way she was looking at Nengi, I'm like, ah, hey, Egba Mio, what is going on? Are you people dragging husband? Are you people dragging money? What are you ladies dragging? Because guys, Nengi did not even send Katrina. She just walked into the room like a queen. And then Katrina just sat down where she was. And to be honest, if looks could kill, I'm sure that Nengi would have tripped and hit her face on the floor really really hard but to be very honest that look was filled with so much envy so much malice like just call it a malicious look and it caused me to wonder that what could have happened off social media off our tv screens that we do not know about because to the best of our knowledge I do not remember Nengi and Katrina dragging anything whilst Katrina spent only one week inside that house <laughs> because she was the first person to be evicted. So what is the beef about? Although they've been having a lot of back and forth on social media, Katrina has been one of the most 
sometimes toxically or negatively vocal housemate, lockdown housemate on social media. And I am I'm sure that a lot of you know the lockdown housemates they are ready and waiting to pounce on her, waiting for Ibuka to ask all those crazy, dangerous questions. But that thing between Nengi and Katrina, please, if you have the information, please share with me in the comment section because I just did not understand that look one bit. Aside Nengi, I also noticed that when the likes of um, is it Ozo and some other people walked into the room, Katrina just sat down where she was, and I'm like, okay, the bus lady has come out to play a dangerous game <laughs> because <laughs> let me not lie you in as much as look we're bashing katrina that hmm you've come with your beef blah 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 guys let me not lie you it was sweeting me i was excited because hey that is why we have a reunion show we want to see all the drama we want to see all the madness so i was just so excited that yes at least one person is already burning the ground with attitude and hey i'm all for that another interesting one was the snobbing, like I call it the snob effect, the snobbing effect that happened very briefly between Lucy and Katrina. Guys, it was just so hilarious. Was this a plan? Whose hair? Uh, it looks like it's very good. How are you doing? Hey, Lucy. I'm fine, I'm okay. Long time no see. You look like you brought back into your white hair from the house. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hello. <laughs> So when Lucy walked into the room looking like a queen godmother and then Katrina was sitting there acting like the good friend that she used to be with um, Lucy whilst they were inside the house. Lucy was greeting everybody, Ebuka was asking everybody how are you doing and then Katrina was like hi Lucy. Lucy just like oh Ebuka, <laughs> oh, I'm okay oh. and then Katrina was like Lucy I'm saying hi Omo you look. Lucy just like no fake zone please <laughs> guys. Listen, and that is one thing I love about Lucy, right from the lockdown mansion. See, eh, if Katrina is that person that claims to be the boss lady that is ready to give everybody bass bows, then she is playing with the wrong person. Because Lucy is not that person that you're going to say trash about behind her back and then you want to come to her front and come and start playing the nice friend. Momo, she put you in your place. And that was what she did to Katrina. She gave Katrina a public snobbing, like public show of shame. And I am very sure that it did not go unnoticed. A lot of people noticed. Even Ebuka noticed. Ebuka was just smiling. I said, Ebuka, calm down. Calm down. It is not yet time to scatter the tables. We will start another day, not today. You know what? I just concluded from last night's premiere that, hey, everybody came for Katrina today. Although everybody did not come for Katrina, but the way people were just passing Katrina, nobody was even sending her. The one that was very, very obvious was the way Neo jumped into the room and passed Katrina straight to Ebuka, straight to Lekon, straight to people that mattered to him. Omo Du did not even send Katrina. And it was quite interesting because it got me wondering what must have happened between Neo and Katrina outside the house. I mentioned in one of my videos the other day that the interesting thing about this reunion is not just about the crazy events that happened whilst these housemates were inside the house, but all the madness, all the drama that grew, you know, whilst they were outside the house. And I told you guys also that there are so many things that social media is not telling us because Truth is, whatever these housemates put on social media, that is what they want us to know. So from the way they were behaving yesterday, the tension, you know, they were laughing as if, oh, everybody is excited to see each other. We all know that some people are just waiting to hit somebody with block on the head. We all know that somebody is waiting to give somebody a dirty slap. We all know that some people came with fire, thunder, and brimstone to come and fight war. So it was just very, very interesting. I was just chilling and watching it. I said, don't worry, your true natures will come out very soon. Let's talk about the hug between Lekon and Nenge. Ah! Man! Listen, 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 guys. Listen, guys. That hug was it for me last night that was it for me you know why because whilst these people were inside the house we saw how friendship bloomed between nengi and lekon i mean it was just so interesting to see and that friendship did not start until ozo was evicted from the house and nengi was lonely and lekon recognized that the, there was a void that needed to be filled in nengi's life and so both of them became very very close like mutually very close 
and one of the fears I had was that oh when they get out of the house everybody's going to be so extremely busy they will forget the friendships that they built from inside the house but I was quite excited to see that Nengi and um, Lekon's friendship did not just go south instead it grew stronger I mean Lekon was playing the gentleman trying to you know not hug Nengi too much because of Zoe is there of course his eyes were just gleaming here and there in Nengi's direction I did not miss that but then Nengi drew him into a very very warm hug guys that made it for me i was just super excited for those two but whilst i was excited for lecon one thing that i did not miss out on was how distracted lecon was there was a point um, I mean the point where Nengi or Zo walked in, when you walked in, I noticed that for just a few minutes or a few seconds whilst Ibuka was catching up with the rest of the housemates, Lekon was kind of absent-minded, like he was not there, he was sort of distracted, he was sort of detached, it was as if his body was there but his mind was not there and I was looking at Lekon and wondering like, ah, President Lekon, I hope everything is okay, I hope you're fine, you know but on a, on a much serious note guys, um, I felt like maybe Lekon is seeing this reunion as the period of reckoning or the day of reckoning or the moment where everything needs to be resolved finally and somehow I just feel like there's so much weight on his head or on his shoulders he just wants to get this thing over and done with and go back to his music and continue with his life and i'm like hey, Con, don't worry everything will be all right guys i just felt like giving him a reassuring hug but question posed to you all what do you think was on lecon's mind in that brief moment because I felt somehow, I was wondering like, guy, calm down, come back, come back to us, come back to us. Don't leave us, don't leave us. Bro, can we just take a moment to give all the housemates a round of applause? Like, <laughs> let's just give them a standing ovation. Their outfit was royalty. Look at what Lacon was wearing. Lacon was looking like the true definition of a lockdown winner. That is how a winner should dress. That is how a winner should look. Look at Ozo's outfit. Like what? Oh my days. Ozo was looking like that billionaire sailor husband that just got back from the sea. In my head, I was just like, honey, your offline wife is here waiting for you. Come to me. <laughs> like guys, Ozo was looking like rich money. I mean, look at look at Lucy. Lucy was looking so royal, so regal, like uh, I could feel the pour coming out of all of that goodness. Look at all of them. They are looking so beautiful. Nengi, look at Dorothy. My God. Fame is good though. <laughs> Fame is good. Money is good. They all look so well. Look at Trickity. Trickity's skin is glowing. Guys, look at all the housemates. Listen, which was your favorite housemate? Which was your best dressed housemate? Let me know in the comment section. Guys, these people were looking so amazing. And once again, I want to give a huge thumbs up to Multi Choice, to DSTV, Big Brother Ninja, whoever styled them up, whoever made them look dashing the way they were looking, they really did great. This reunion is the most classy the most organized, most coordinated reunion ever. Remember guys, I've always told you all that the previous reunion, that's the Them Gang reunion, it looked rushed. It looked like they were just trying to hurry up everything and then move on to the next season of the show. But then this one, I'm so excited that they took their time. You know, they did not rush anything. They did not hurry anything. They took their time. They prepared everything. Look at the sets. Look at the set. Please, who is that interior decorator? Drop the person's number for me. I don't vex. I want to use that person's service immediately. Guys, I was blown away. Overall, let's just come back to earth and say it as frankly as possible. You see all those laughter. You see all those, oh my God, I missed you. Oh, I was looking forward to seeing you. All those hugs here and there. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, but it felt like it was partly genuine and it felt partly fake. You could see through all of that facade all the housemates they are under tension they are all tensed they they are kind of jittery and it totally reminded me just as dorothy said you know the day one of the lockdown show when the housemate newly got into the house everybody was being so nice friendly hugging each other here and there oh before the end of the season <laughs> 
people had become enemies people had become lovers people had gotten together and broken up and everything is cut out the table destroyed for the house patak, 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 patak. when they were asking them in the beginning of the show oh what do you think about your fellow housemates and we're like oh biggie thank you for picking this set of people i it would not have been better without the homo <laughs> Towards the end of the show, people had become sworn enemies, you know. So that was the exact same scenario that I saw in last night's premiere. When he came in all excited, being all friendly, being all chilled. Okay, not everybody being friendly and chilled anyways, but <laughs> it looked so similar. And this is some sort of prediction to tell us that ah, before the reunion finish, definitely somebody will chop slap. Definitely they'll go break table. Definitely. Ah, relationships could either get more cemented or resolved or never to be resolved for life. So let's just wait and see how all of that goes. This is where I'm going to be ending this particular episode of Frankly Speaking with Glory, Elijah. This video was quite fun to film. <laughs> I was just having fun all through. But hey, your opinion matters to me, guys. So let me know what you think about my observations. Did you see the same thing? Also, what do you think about the outfits, the setting, the entire makeup of the show? Let me know in the comment section below and I will see you guys on another episode of Frankly Speaking with Glory. And don't forget guys, make it a date with me on Saturday, which is tomorrow, 3 p.m. West African time or 1500 WAT. We have a lot to discuss. And also remember, that's a lot of remembering for you guys to do, but remember also guys, um, tomorrow, you need to come out and defend your favorite, depending on the level of spillage that we get from tonight's um, episode of the Big Brother Ninja Lockdown Reunion. I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Bye.